Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The surveillance camera network in the U.S. Capitol was hijacked by Romanian ransomware and charges have been filed against a pair that were arrested abroad. Nissan Canada's vehicle financing wing has been hacked, putting personal information on more than a million customers into the hands of miscreants. Tesla's Elon Musk has pledged to make a pickup truck as part of his future plans for the electric vehicle maker. Talk of long-range wireless charging has been around for some time, but we've yet to see a product that can charge devices from relatively long distances. Thanks to startup Energis, however, room-scale charging will soon be a reality and available to everyone. And Apple has changed the rules around how games on its App Store will be using loot boxes. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. This is the Category5.tv newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. The surveillance camera network in the U.S. Capitol was hijacked by Romanian ransomware, and charges have been filed against a pair that were arrested abroad. Two of the five unnamed individuals cuffed this month in Romania on suspicion of spreading ransomware earlier this year are now facing U.S. computer crime charges for their alleged role in taking over 123 of 187 ne networked computers, computers that control Washington, D.C.'s CCTV cameras. According to Europol, which led the arrests this week, two of those arrested are suspected of attacking American computer systems using the Cerber ransomware. In an affidavit obtained by CNN, unsealed by mistake and then resealed, Secret Service agent James Graham laid out the, the basis for the U.S. Department of Justice's computer fraud case against two Romanian nationals. A Justice Department spokesperson confirmed the linkage of the arrests and the U.S. court filing. The spokesperson said, These are separate but related investigations and the people you name are among those arrested by Europol. Graham described how around January 9, 2017 and January 12, 2017, the pair, as part of an alleged ransomware scheme, took control of the networked Windows computers used by the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police to run their traffic cameras. On January 12, having recognized that some of the cameras were offline, D.C. Police IT staff and a Secret Service agent used remote desktop software to connect to one of the servers controlling the cameras. They watched as the device with a number of open desktop windows was running unexpected software. The IT administrator subsequently blocked network access for the compromised device, which was then removed along with two other computers for forensic analysis. Investigators determined that two ransomware variants, Cerber and Dharma, had been installed on the computers. They also found a text file, USA.txt, that contained 179,616 email addresses being used to spam intended run ransomware victims. A text file with the same checksum was subsequently found in an email account associated with one of the defendants. One of those email addresses stood out to the investigators and they were able to obtain access to its records from Google. Within that, they found evidence to show that the two arrested were renting access to Cerber in order to infect victims, uh, scramble their files, extort money from them to, rest uh, to restore the data. The Europol release calls this crime as a service. The various email accounts and IP addresses and cross-references with fraud databases provided enough details to ask Romanian officials for further digital data linked to the defendants. Hmm. So... That's crazy. I just, I feel like the CCTVs for Washington, D.C., the traffic, like it controls the traffic 
lights. Right? I wonder how purposeful it was, though, that they hit that network. Like, ransomware is typically very random in, in its targets. Right. And I think that's where we fall into thinking, oh, well, nobody would ever attack me. Well, ran- ransomware, which is one of the worst threats that we're up against right now, is not a targeted attack. Typically, it goes out by, well, 179,000 email addresses that they're just spamming. Right. So are they all targeted? Well, technically, they're on the list, but how did they get on that list? They're not necessarily specifically targeted. Right. But somehow See, they were able to compromise these servers, so that leads to thinking, okay, something's not being said. Right. About infrastructural security. It's Windows, right? It is Windows. And it had a remote desktop installed. So were they monitoring? Here's the thing. We've got remote desktop on our computers. If you're running Windows, it allows you to connect to your computer from home. Right. At the office and so on, right? So if someone was whacking away at your password, trying to guess the password, how would you know? I, right. Yeah, you would wouldn't. not. You wouldn't. Um, So what kind of security mechanisms are in place by the government and the police to protect against that kind of attack? Typically, you know, if you've guessed the password five times and it's wrong, lock lock the IP address out. Here's a case where probably what they're not telling us, okay, yeah, blame it on ransomware, blame it on this, and sure, they did something bad, but there's an open port called Remote Desktop. They've been whacking away at it. They found the password. They remoted into the desktop and launched a bunch of mm-hmm. programs, installed the ransomware manually. Right. This was not an accidental, whoops, somebody ran the program on our traffic cameras. No, this is somebody remoted into the traffic cameras that you had installed. wide open to the world. Right. Whoops. Oopsie. What is Cerber and what is Dharma? Are those... Uh, two different variants of ransomware. So Dharma, um, I think Dharma is the older of the two, but okay. they're all very current. Like this, Dharma was um, uh, August, I believe, okay. was when it hit. Um, Dharma being, um, oh, it's hard. They all kind of run together at this point. It was so much easier when there was Crypto Locker and a couple of variants. Right. Um, th- what's neat about Cerber, or what's different about Cerber, is that it's being sold as a service, as they said, in this accidentally open document, which was promptly sealed after we obviously right. read it and got all the information. Um, but it, it's sold. So some it's hackers have created crime this. as a service. Yeah, and, they, yeah, and are now selling it, saying, hey, Sasha, would you like to run your own ransomware scheme? Here's the program. Why? You pay for yes. this. And then you make the money off of the ransomware. Right. And that's what Cerber does. Now, Dharma is a different variant of ransomware. I'm not too sure on that one how it differs or they're all just different variants right yeah. but uh, dharma in particular if i recall correctly is one that it does not like wanna cry was devastating because it took advantage of exploits in microsoft windows in order to propagate right so it infected it spread and- dharma mm-hmm. requires the user to run it okay so if you get a Dharma infection, you have run something malicious. You've gone to a website that's tried fault. to throw you something and you said yes to the wrong question. Oops. But in this case, the malicious users themselves remoted into the computer and installed Dharma. Right. That's the impression that I get. I feel like if I was in charge of the CCTVs and the traffic lights in any city at all, I would not use it for any malicious things. I would just always make it green lights for me. Perfect. <laughs> it's like it, it senses your geolocation data from your Some, phone. Yeah, something just, where it's like yeah, green light. Absolutely. In fact, it would be the opposite of ransomware. I'd just be like, pay me and I'll make, this, I'll make the lights green for Perfect. you. Perfect. It'd be good. It makes absolute sense, Sasha. Yeah, that's right. This is why we don't give you any power. That's why I read a script. <laughs> <laughs> Nissan Canada's vehicle financing wing has been hacked, putting personal information on more than a million customers into the hands of miscreants. In an email to Nissan car buyers, Nissan Canada admitted its computer systems were compromised with unauthorized persons gaining access to the personal information of some customers that have financed their vehicles through Nissan Canada Finance or Infinity Financial Services Canada. The note added, we apologize for any frustration and anxiety this may have caused our customers and we thank you for your patience and support as we work through this issue. Wow. Yeah, nice. A similar message is now on the automaker's website. 
According to Nissan Canada, the exposed data includes at least customers' names, addresses, vehicle makes and models, vehicle identification numbers, credit scores, loan amounts, and monthly payment figures. Nissan Canada admitted it discovered on Monday, December 11th that it had been hacked and alerted the world <clears throat> 10 days later. No personal banking information, such as card numbers, were taken, we're told. However, the automaker is offering 12 months of free credit monitoring to its customers just in case the scumbags do exploit the exposed records. So A, 12 months is not enough because the miscreants could definitely strike in the 13th month. Sure. Also, I don't need a credit card number if I were to be this person. Really? Like, would you really need the credit card number to uh, steal somebody's identity? No. Yeah, right. Really? Oh, I think we fall into thinking, hey, if someone gets my credit card number, they can go shopping and get into my accounts. But if I have, true. If I have the payment amount... Right of the right, and I can just assume which and bank personal you're using. information. Personal information. Yeah. Then when I call the bank and say, "Hey, I forgot my password," and they'll say, "Well, can you tell me a little bit about your bank account?" Yeah, I know that on the fifteenth of the month, one hundred and ninety-two dollars and seventeen cents comes out. They'd be like, "Oh, mm -hmm. obviously you exactly. are Sasha," <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. But they're that the bad. hacker. They're the person who stole yeah. the information. And if I'm not sure which bank you deal with, well, guess what? I've got your phone number. Boop, 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 boop. Hi, Sasha. This is Robbie calling from TD Canada Trust. Oh. Uh, we were looking at your account. Oh, oh, you don't deal with TD Canada Trust? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I must have the wrong number. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Hi, Sasha. This is Robbie calling from uh, yeah. CIBC. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. Somebody has, you know, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. So we're listening for flags. Oh, that's your bank. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Right? 10 days. 10 days they knew well, about this before they alerted anybody. Now, here's the thing. Why wouldn't they just say, as soon as they found out, hey, there's a problem? What were they trying to figure out in the background? How much information was taken? Well, what they we can only speculate, right? Ah. But like anything that is shrouded in bureaucracy and lawyers, right. what do they need to do? They need to confirm data before they can release it. We're not going to just announce randomly, hey, we've been compromised. Yeah, I just feel... It's probably best and it, it, to take 10 days. I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't love it. No, but right? if we now know exactly what's been taken, probably have a little bit of information for the FBI to know, or whoever, I guess here in Canada, it would be a different agency. But you, you know what I mean? Like they need to collect enough information to, one, make sure that the person doesn't still have access to that data in that they're actively copying data at that time. Right. They need to lock it down. Do you think 12 months is enough? To for offer insurance protection? Yes. Well, it gives you enough time to change all your cards, change your name, move to a different country, and... Go into the witness protection program. <laughs> kind of. It's... I, this information could be used for identity theft and right. other things. So it is, it is more serious than they let on. And couldn't they have just stored the information in a far more secure way? Like, I, this reminds me of the story just where like a hard drive was stolen yeah. out of a room. Mm -hmm. I feel like why is any of that information not, you know... Encrypted in with government grade encryption. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. it's always hindsight, right? You were always looking back and saying, oh, I really should have had a backup of those files or I really should have... Well, and companies are just as guilty because companies are run by people. Right. At least for now. <laughs> so, speaking of machines taking over the world, Tesla's Elon Musk has pledged to make a pickup truck as part of the future plans for the electric vehicle maker. Elon Musk made a promise on Twitter after asking his followers for suggestions about how the firm could improve. He said the open back truck would follow the Model Y, a yet-to-be-detailed car, which is expected to be based on its Model 3 sedan. But experts note Tesla has suffered repeated delivery delays. That has led to some to question whether the loss-making company can meet its existing commitments, which also include a transport truck and a sports car. Musk has also made several promises about new features that Tesla intends to add to its existing vehicles, including intelligent windshield wipers. 
Demand for pickup trucks has risen over the past year despite a drop in demand for other types of light vehicles. Musk had previously hinted at his plans for a pickup when an image showing an obscured pickup was briefly shown being carried on the back of its semi-truck at the press conference announcing it in November. In his tweets, Musk said the vehicle would be would likely be slightly bigger than Ford's best-selling F-150 pickup to allow it to contain an unspecified game-changing feature. Hmm. Wonder what that means, a game-changing feature. Wow, that kind of leaves it wide open. Now, Twitter was a buzz, and one particular tweet actually caught Elon Musk's attention and got him to reply. MC Flash Tube said, here's a list of the things I think that could be. First of all, a rain sensor, all eight cameras as a dash cam. Ooh. Ooh. Ambient light settings for brightness, footwell front and rear seats. Uh, sign recognition for the automation system. Oh, that that's would be cool. Good. Music quieter when you open all the doors. That's a good idea too, actually. That's interesting. And finally, his greatest suggestion, which has caused Twitter to erupt, is Tesla disco mode. <laughs> Ambient lighting that mu- moves to the music beat with an on and off brightness. I don't hate any of those ideas. <laughs> Elon said something like, uh, oh, I love all the first ideas. We were going to say that, yeah, those are probably possibilities. But that last one, not too sure. Not so much. Not too I sure. like the idea of intelligent windshield wipers. And I remember talking about that before. But of late, driving in pretty much any city, but especially Barrie, yeah. evidently, I would like intelligent indicators i think intelligent other drivers would also help right this is where i think robots <laughs> indicators just take How, over the okay world. so define the indicators because your answer was serious mine was a joke although i will say <laughs> that robots driving cars would be better than humans driving well cars. they have autonomous features exactly so what, what would the so the problem do? i i have is people do not indicate their intentions when they're driving right right or they so, slow down almost to a stop before turning on the blinker that says i'm actually turning exactly yeah, or they turn without yeah or they turn without mm-hmm. indicating or mm-hmm. they change lanes without indicating or they'll just indicate while they're changing lanes that's a big pet peeve of mine i know all of our viewers are just going yeah that bugs me too because none of our viewers would do something like that can there no never could there (laughs) not be some sort of intelligence in the car because clearly it's not (laughs) it's called the driver no no we need other intelligence in the car that somehow will sense (laughs) the autonomous uh, robot voice over the intercom is like uh you didn't signal yeah, is there something? It's like be Sasha's voice. When you turn without signaling, you get a jolt or something. <laughs> it shocks you. <laughs> I just... Two electrodes. And the thing is, we all know, I sold my... I don't even have a car. I am no longer a driver. I ride my bike, and still it bothers me if people don't indicate. Yes. That's it's even a, more dangerous It's more now. dangerous. Yeah. Please indicate. Elon Musk, please make your extra feature <laughs> an indicator. I don't something care about the like windshield that. Safety so features are okay. key. I think that's what it boils down to. Exactly. Talk of long-range wireless charging has been around for some time, but we've yet to see a product that can charge devices from relatively long distances. Thanks to startup Energis, however, room-scale charging will soon be a reality and available to everyone. The San Jose-based company announced that the Federal Commission's Communication, or the FCC, has just certified its watt-up mid-field transmitter, which converts electricity into radio waves and beams the power to any device fit with a receiver up to three feet away. Hmm. Wireless chargers have been around for several years, but most of them require a device to be in direct contact with the station. A startup called Pi recently released what it called the first ever contactless wireless charging product, which uses the same resident induction tech as Qi, although its range is limited to one foot. Energis's power at a distance system boasts a greater distance than Pi and is still able to charge multiple devices at once. Additionally, the WattUp ecosystem allows receivers and transmitters made by different manufacturers to work together. 
In addition to the midfield transmitters, the company is also working on far field transmitters that have a greater range and allow multiple transmitters to be linked together to cover large spaces. There's also the near field transmitter, a low power solution that can be embedded into laptops, tablets, consoles, and more. There are no watt op devices available to consumers yet, but Energis will be showing off the technology at CES in a couple of weeks. Hmm. That's cool. I love this. So the CES is the Consumer Electronics Show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which I had to look up because I was interested in it. Turns out that it has like this big long history. That turns can, out, oh yeah. Turns out that every it's been January for, it's a big deal. It's this a is, huge big this deal. This is where all the, the manufacturers go to show off the newest stuff. Right. Yeah. Converting electricity into radio waves. Is that is that something that is easy like what would that mean well you know, this people- is a whole different thing mm-hmm. like the like being able to beam that energy is like how do you do that safely without creating microwaves and things like and that disrupting people's pacemakers or yeah, like or cochlear any, yeah. implants or something causing like- health issues and so that's something that they obviously would have addressed considering they've got fcc approval um but um, the technique itself is typically just being able to di- direct the energy through a diode that would, you know, transmit the energy to a receiver. But I guess that receiver would be your phone or right. your smartwatch or something. But uh, presumably, I could be sitting in a waiting room using my smartphone, and that waiting room would be charging my phone. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you think about it, radio waves. Like, I'm not. I'm not scared of radio waves. I feel like they're everywhere. They're they are. everywhere. They that's are why inside when you us. Turn on your radio. You can hear it because you're just capturing the radio waves that are already here. I have a metal right? filling in the back here, and it's all the time. It's yeah. like it's short wave. See? Yeah. Okay, so here's a funny little story about this story. Is I was reading it earlier, mm. um, and... I charge my phone with Qi charging, like, okay. yeah. right? And I love it. But I was talking about this, and I was like, oh, this is so much better than my thing. <laughs> so, you mean I can actually use it and not have to have it sitting, sitting on the on desk? Yeah. What's funny is that my lamp got mad at me, and my Qi wouldn't work for like five minutes. No afterwards. way. Oh, I had you the conversation and I was like, lamp. Dave, look at this. It's like not registering my phone anymore. <laughs> it got <laughs> so mad at me. It has AI. <laughs> so wow. there you go. That's, that's like, really creepy. Clearly session. it's random. I turned it off, turned it on again, and it was fine. That's always the answer. But- Always the answer. There you go. You got one more? I do. All right. Apple has changed the rules around how games on its app store will be using loot boxes. These boxes are random rewards for gameplay and often give players benefits and power-ups that can be used in games. In a change to its developer guidelines, Apple said games must now let players know the odds of getting particular items in the boxes. Loot boxes have been controversial for some time with experts saying they amount to a covert lottery. In the updated guidelines, Apple said any in-game mechanism that rewards players with randomized virtual items must list the odds of receiving each type of item. In addition, it said customers must be informed of these odds before they buy the boxes or rewards. Many games offer extras to players that can change the appearance of the game, introduce new characters, or bestow power-ups that help people as they play. Some titles let people buy loot boxes with in-game funds they generate by playing or by spending real money to purchase the game's virtual cash. The controversy over the crates was thrown into sharp focus last month with the release of the Star Wars Battlefront 2 game, which used them extensively. U.S. politicians called for greater regulation of games that use loot boxes and crates. One politician saying that a Battlefront, ba- that Battlefront 2 was Star Wars-themed online casino. The backlash led to Electronic Arts, the publisher of the Battlefront 2, to rework it to remove its reliance on the random reward system. In the UK, there have been calls for games that use the loot system to be regulated just like other lotteries. The UK's Gambling Commission said the boxes did not come under its control because the rewards they handed out were only usable in the game. (laughs) Um, That, I would say, is my main point. 
It's a game, and the rewards are in the game. It's not a casino. It's not real money. I mean, it is real money, I guess, if you're spending your real money on sure. doing it. Those but. who do. But I think about my kids using a game that is, in all essences, an online casino. Right. And they're, you know, being trained to gamble. So there's, there's kind of two sides to it. As adults, we can, we can differentiate. We can say, right. well, well, it's yeah. a game. And, hey, you know, I could rent a movie for five bucks, or I can deposit five bucks into this game and and play it for a while well it is gambling right but are putting the odds on it going to help that decision at all that's a weird thing eh? yeah i don't think solution i I feel like mm, no hey you're gambling we're gonna prove it by giving showing you what showing you the odds of getting that which treats it like a lottery epic stuff Mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't love that politicians are discussing this Sure. I feel like this is there not are the more thing important things to be talking about. Although I will tell you, I did last Christmas give Dave a treasure box for the house that I just put randomized loot into <laughs> because I love the idea of these chests so much that we actually have a real one in our house, and sometimes it nice. has nothing in it. The chances are actually pretty good. It has nothing in it, and sometimes it has like a bag of potato chips. Sometimes it has a Nintendo Switch. It has like, Ooh. like it's very randomized, but the odds are pretty low. There's ever anything more than a love note in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fun. That's fun. So there we go. <laughs> Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman.